In the following video series, I will cover what it takes to get started using UDK. I will only cover the most essential and the most important functions that you need to know to get started using UDK in the shortest amount of time as possible. So, the first thing we need to do is we need to download UDK. So head over to UDK.com and when you come to the front page, you can click on the download the, uh, the UDK beta or you can go ahead and download UDK up here on top and just go ahead and download the latest version in this case it's May so let's download this and install so once you have it downloaded let's go ahead and install so double click and let the installer run so and the default directory is your C drive UDK folder and then the version so go ahead and click install and here after a few minutes our installation is complete so I'm gonna go ahead and uncheck launch Unreal Development Kit because I wanna show you how to launch your UDK from uh, from the folder and how to create a shortcut so go, let's click finish so now let's navigate to our installation folder so here I am inside my C drive and UDK folder inside this folder I currently have two folders each one of them represents a different version of UDK. So this one is March and this one is the, w the one that we currently downloaded and installed which is May version. So depending on which version you have it will create a new folder and it'll install everything in there. So now let's navigate inside the UDK uh, May version and let's take a look at the folder structure. So the four folders are binaries, development, engine and UDK game. So the binary folder includes all the game binary executable files. Uh, the development folder is your source code files. Engine folder includes uh, different engine files. And the most important one that we need for uh, content creation is UDK game. It includes all the important content uh, such as uh, maps, uh, models, textures, materials, all the content to create our environments. This is where uh, everything happens. So let's navigate inside the content folder and in here we have all the packages that UDK uses to pull content from. So we have our environments, we have effects, characters, uh, here are the map files. So everything that you're going to be working with in order for you to open a map or open a different package with models and materials uh, and various textures everything is going to be inside the UDK game folder and inside the content folder. Now let's go back out into our four folder structures and let's go inside the binaries. Now in here to quite a few uh, important files that we need. Uh, these include various plugins as well as the executables to launch our game and our editor. The Actor X, the face plugins, all these plugins uh, are going to be very important if you're creating content using uh, 3ds Max or Maya or uh, other uh, 3D packages. There is a speed tree modeler in here. This is where you'll be creating uh, uh, trees at, in order for you to use and create foliage inside uh, a UDK. Now there are a few ways we can launch the editor or the game. One is if we head down to the start menu and head over and we can navigate all the way to Unreal Development Kit uh, version name and then we can choose editor, game or speed tree another way if we go into the installation folder into binaries here we have UDK which is the game and then we have UDK Lift which is the editor right click on UDK Lift send to desktop create shortcut so here's our editor shortcut so if we double click on this now it won't launch the editor but it will launch the game so what we need to do is we need to edit our shortcut so right click go to properties and where it says target click at the end where at exe press space and type in editor click apply ok and if we double click now we will launch the editor also another way we can create a shortcut is if we go to the start menu navigate to the UDK folder we can right click and send to desktop any of these items that we have uh, inside the folder so here we are editor launched 
this is the default startup windows we have uh, the startup tip window uh, you can cycle through various tips and here is the generic browser uh, the content browser here once we launch the editor we are ready the first thing let's talk about the autosave function by default when you launch the UDK we have the autosave function turned on we can disable it or we can enable it depending on how you like to work uh, so by default it's on and here on the bottom you have a little uh, check it means autosaving is enabled if we check this icon right next to it it'll disable it and then we can enable it there's also a couple of options uh, let me move this window a little bit so you can see if we click and we, uh, we have uh, various options that we can save we can have package type to autosave uh, here it says autosave maps and you can autosave content packages as well as you can uh, set an interval how often it will save your map um, personally I like to turn this off um, I like to manually save and to manually save just go to file and you click on save as and you save your map and then then you just save all of save uh, now this is just a personal preference I like to manually save but you can enable your autosave and set the interval timed and what you like to automatically save next thing we want to cover is the content browser head up here at the top toolbar and there's a little icon that says open the content browser click on that and here we have the content browser uh, we'll be spending a lot of time uh, looking through various assets that's inside the UDK they include materials, they include textures, particle effects, sounds, static meshes so here at, on the very left we have packages uh, think of packages as uh, folders um, inside here on UDK game content so in here we have various uh, packages or folders that have specific assets inside them so we have pickups, we have sounds, we have test packages uh, under environments uh, that's where we have most of our uh, materials and static meshes so by double clicking on that it expands even further and here we have various packages uh, of walls, decorations, floors, etc. so by clicking on each one we in the preview window we get to see what's inside and they include uh, textures, they include materials, they include static meshes so by clicking we can just cycle through and see what's inside those packages Now there's an easier way to look at what's inside by going up to the object type here and we can filter by type so if I'm looking through uh, walls packages here uh, I can filter by a specific asset so if I click on the materials I will only see materials if I click on the textures I will only see textures the difference between textures and materials are textures is what makes up a material Texture is just a single image, such as a color, a normal map, um, there's also a specular map, and using multiple textures combined together, they make up a material. Well, let's take a look at one of these materials and uh, how many different textures that one material is made up of. So let's double click on this material and open up the Unreal Material Editor. And here we have different nodes set up that make up that material so material is a complex structure of different textures uh, different expressions uh, that make up that material so in here we can see we have a texture sample here we have another texture sample here uh, another texture sample there is multiple ones uh, here we have uh, a normal map and everything is being connected together to make up that material so multiple textures make up a material so that is why that if we look at the specific package we can see a green outline around the materials that means we can use them inside the editor and all the textures have a red outline that means we can't use that texture inside the editor it has to be combined and make up the material and if we double click on the static mesh a window opens up for that static mesh we can take a closer look at what that static mesh looks like uh, there's options for it we can uh, take a look at uh, such options as wireframe uh, we can show collision next uh, we have here on the very bottom we have uh, different views that we can cycle through to look at our uh, our assets inside that specific package we can organize it by name by type by tags 
Uh, here at the very top we have also tags. Uh, here we can uh, increase the percentage of which we view these assets inside the content browser. Uh, there's also different views here in the drop down menu and there's also different tags that we can go tags by name, by type and etc. So take a little bit of time and just look through different packages take a look at uh, materials and uh, double click on some of the static meshes and just get comfortable using the, uh, the content browser